I recommend. You recommend it? Yeah. (laughs) Brilliant. This year, I was invited by Emily Chilvers to Royal Hospital Chelsea to find out more about the pottery sessions she runs there, to meet and chat with some of the pensioners that enjoy spending time in the pottery studio, and, of course, to see what they've been making. In episode 92 of the Creativity Found podcast, you can hear all about how Emily started the sessions on a six-week trial 10 years ago and hear from the pensioners about why they love the sessions and the many benefits they have gleaned from their Pottery Tuesdays. The only problem with that, of course, is that you can't see the results of their creative endeavours. So stay tuned to see and hear more from Chelsea pensioners Tony, Bert, Ray and John. I mean, the reason I came down, so when I arrived, I wasn't in the best position. I wasn't in the best situation. Um, I took took about grumpy old men. Well, uh, <laughs> like that. Yeah. I, I, I'm suddenly showing these things. I never done this before. I was sleeping all day, I might as well go down and do it. Because if I didn't do it, I'd sleep. Uh, the more I sleep, the worse I am. Yeah. So this is therapeutic to me. Yeah. Very much so. And the other thing is I've started having life. It's not quite right, but it started to be fun. And that started here. Yeah. And then they do these little characters. Wow, look at that. This is a test, they're red. Yeah. yeah. With black cuffs, yeah. black tricorn. And they're great for standing uh, um, flowers in. Yeah. And they're heavy, they don't tip over. Yeah. But I've developed it from having no arms and just round buttons. Yeah. And square arms, smaller buttons. And now this is the first one without feet. Yeah. <laughs> so you can have feet on for the first one. Brilliant. Isn't he's just drying out at the moment, but I didn't want to leave him in there in case somebody knocked him over. Yeah. And how do you find it working with clay from having had lots of experience now of working with wood? With wood, if you take a shaving off, you can't stick it back on. <laughs> yeah. With clay, <laughs> you can do what you like. You can mash it up again and throw it back in the box. Yeah. And leave it for the next week. Yeah. Take it out again, wedge it, use it again. Yeah. So I think this is a much yeah. friendlier... Because if you do it with wood, you get it wrong. You know? And there's not really so much sharp tools in clear eye. No. So yeah. It's very therapeutic. Is it? Because yeah. <laughs> if I do if I... Sometimes I come and make these and I take them back to my room and I'll paint them on a night when I'm yeah. sitting and watching the TV. Yeah. So, yeah. Keeps my mind occupied as well. Yeah. And it's good fun. I, I, I love that... Per, that person interaction so that's and that is really what drives what I do and perhaps sometimes becomes the forefront of what I do over over the you know the the medium in which we're what we're using the clay that we're using that's that's the conversation started but it's the conversation that develops out of it for each person that I love the most and that's what is is empowering for me and and for whoever I'm working with that it can give somebody that at that age because you know, I'm sort of almost upskilling people above me, you know, people that I really look up to. And certainly at the hospital, it's like in, I respect them so much and, and, and the lives that they've led and the stories that come back to me as I'm sharing my skill with them. It's, it's, it's a lovely dialogue that we have. And that's really what I treasure the most. Ostriches. Ah, oh, Can wow. you do anything with them? Yeah. So I decided... Wow. So, so cool. I just like making yeah, things right. stupid oh, yeah. and unusual. Yeah. Because nobody can ever say that isn't perfect. Because yeah. it's only perfect, like everything is the same off the production yeah. line. Yeah. Right? So that's perfect in its way because that's how I wanted it to be. Yeah. Imperfect. Yeah. Mostly, yeah. I mean, I don't tend to make things for myself 
I have made one thing for myself in particular, which is a, a cockerel. And he's, uh, but he, yeah, yeah, and he's in my room. Yeah. And I, I've got a couple of other pieces, but mostly I, I don't, and I think Ray is the same. We don't make things for ourselves, particularly, do we? We tend to be, we tend to, you, you tend to, you know, make things because other people get some enjoyment out of it. And, yeah. it, and it's a way of, uh, mostly we make things for people who have been very kind to us. The place I was in, uh, it wasn't a great place. It's all kept away. Oh, I miss my spot. <laughs> <laughs> Please can I go back? <laughs> and nobody was stopping me except men. Yeah. So it, it is therapeutic. It's, it's therapeutic. Pottery itself is therapeutic in so much that I, I have a, when I, Choose the finished item to put down. Then it's sort of how the hell did I do that? No, no, that's not mine. You made that one yourself. No, that's not and it was quite a mixed sort of group of, of guys that, that were coming for different reasons. Some were interested um, in pottery previously or had done a little bit before. Others kind of liked the idea of trying something different. Uh, there was a chap in particular who was kind of one of, well, he was the founding member, Jimmy Jones, and he'd never done it before, but he was quite interested. I took some objects into handle when I first went to meet them all, and he was quite interested and showed a, showed an interest in me talking about the Victorian Albert Museum and places that we could perhaps explore and things like that. And his ears pricked up, and Teresa, who was the activity lady at the time, had said to me, like, wow, he doesn't often respond to many things, you know, this so this is obviously quite a... This is exciting because if we can get him to do something, it'd be great. And he was with me for about eight years. He um, passed away just between during during COVID, not because of COVID. Um, but he was a wonderful man and was this had the steadiest hands <laughs> I've ever known. He he became known for these sort of spotty patterned clocks that he would make that were his sort of signature thing. And he was 94, 95, I think, when he passed away. But his hands were so steady, so that he was really neat in doing these patterns. And, you know, they were all precise based on the clock and the configuration of the numbers and everything. And it was just so lovely to watch him work. The first one I made was Gromit, the dog. Oh, OK. So yeah. I decided I couldn't give that and Gromit, right? So therefore, I made... Yeah, that's, that's such fun. So that's, that and at the moment, his legs are in the kiln. Righty ho, <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> the thing about pottery is it, it doesn't matter, and the mistake doesn't matter. It's not like you're working in wood, and the precision's got to be. Yeah. The precision is there when you finish. It hasn't got to be there, but. Yeah, it's a, and it's it's your interpretation. Yeah, it just found it helped me in the mood, in the headspace I was in, and I, I I I got into it, and then I looked forward to going to it, and as as I, you know, got into it and so on, so things got better for me. 